again. It's me, John Radigan, with the great Nate Newton, number 61 in your hearts. No, number one in your hearts. He was 61 on the field. And uh, he's here because we do this little show called What, Nate? Let me tell you something. And after this show, I may be 61 in your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true it's a truth because nate and yeah. he's been this way almost his whole life he's a celtics fan yes so you know people watching this may not align a lot with what nate's saying but we're going to get into all that we we uh both uh, digested game three last night probably in different ways uh but we'll we'll get into all that and uh we'll talk a little bit about the cowboys of course nate's team since he was 10 years old, too, because uh, they're getting ready to go. And not that close, but they're getting ready to go to training camp, Nate. This this month, between when you had your last mini camp and when you have training camp, is that the is that a, a great month for NFL players? Uh, because you know you're, you're, it's your last bit of freedom, if you will, for a while. Or, or What do you remember about the month of, of June? Uh, I remember it was like two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks off. It wasn't uh, a month, month and a half, or six weeks off. Uh, a lot can happen, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, if you're a rookie, you want to be hanging around the facilities. You want to be getting everything you can in. You want to be trying to watch a little film into your playbooks. So if you're a veteran guy, you put the finishing touches on what you got to do and and who you are, you know, but a guy like me who was, uh, I had a weight problem. I had to be real careful during this time. I had to make sure I kept some type of regiment going. Uh, uh, and when you have a new coach, you know, that, that gives you a little bit of anxiety, especially if you're a first year, second year guy, and you're trying to solidify yourself and who you are. So you want to be trying to, um, get into that playbook, uh, do the right things. A lot of kids, don't understand, uh, get that family time in at the beginning. When they first give you off and the, the mandatory mini camp is over, them first two weeks go and be with your family. Then come back and start back your regiment so you can roll into camp in some type of shape. Don't do it the other way. Don't, don't continue to work out. Then take two weeks off and hang out with your family because it's going to be about fun. It's going to be about having a good time. It's going to be about relaxing and it's going to be hard to get up and work out those two weeks. And so you may lose some of that edge or some of that, um, uh, that, um, that get up and go. So you don't want that. I mean, now some guys have that perfect body, that perfect metabolism. They can do that, but most guys can't. So, you, you know, you first break that mandatory, that last mandatory mini camp. You want to make sure that uh, you get with the family, have fun, travel, do what you got to do. And then uh, with about two weeks left, you be want, you want to put that fine edge on, on, the, on, on that thing so you can be mentally ready for camp. So uh, did your career start early enough to where there were still guys, you know, because back in the day, guys came to training camp to get in shape, right? Yeah. A lot of them yeah. worked as a dead gum insurance salesman or whatever in the off season. Yes. They came to training camp to get in shape. Uh, uh, do you remember that happening or by uh, the yes. time you were in? Yes. Uh, you do. I, I caught yeah. the tail end of when you uh, spent eight, uh, six to eight weeks in camp, two weeks with the rookies by themselves. And then about a week and a half later, the, the uh, veterans come in, start trickling in. And then, uh, you know, they'll start trickling like you about that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, getting themselves settled in. Then that Monday, the real training camp start because now you will go from getting 100 percent of the reps to maybe getting 10 percent of the reps because yeah. they got they got to get start getting these guys in shape. And the coaches knew who was going to come in there right and ready to go and who wasn't, you know, depending on the position and who the player was. So it was. So Go ahead, I'm sorry. Did did you uh did you from the get go have to um spend this time like you say being really careful managing the weight and stuff like that or or did did that happen uh, a little later on no, in your career? Man, I, I, the first time I ever came to a Cowboys training camp, I was about three forty. Oh yeah, I, I, you know, and then after that, you know, it just was uh 
I was young. I was having fun. Uh, I mean, I was enjoying myself. So, but I, yeah. as time went on, I got better about my conditioning because I got older and you can't, uh, get the weight off as quick or as, as fast. And, and so, you know, your bones hurt a little longer. So you, uh, you kind of be a little bit more careful as you get older. All right. So in this final month, uh, before training camp begins, uh, do you believe, Nate, that we could expect uh, uh, progress? Let's face it, not just progress, but could we see either Dak or CD get that extension uh, that they both either deserve or in the case of CD, he definitely deserves it, but also really wants it? Uh, you know, I, I never try to uh, guess what Mr. Jones is doing. You, I, I'm one of the few guys that don't know. You know, they say, OK, I know Jerry speak. I don't know Jerry speak. I know this about Mr. Jones and his uh, guys that he worked with and his son and his family is that they can pick times uh, to explode on the scene. So if doing that uh, CD right now, who really cares? But let something big jump. You know, something big happened right before training camp. Then all of a sudden, you'll see the CD Lamb deal done. You'll see the DAC yeah. deal done. I mean, they know how to capture the scene or take away the glory from something else to add on to them. Oh, yeah, by the way, the Cowboys have done this. You know, we never really hear that during the offseason or when it's a lull in things. They don't want to be the explosion. They want to be the enhancer to the explosion. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not looking for anything to get done right now, but, you know, let's say training camp has started and, you know, and they needed that big bang. Oh, we got CD Lamb signed. He'll be in tomorrow. Da, 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 da. And they'll capture the world, you know, and that's just how yeah. they do it. Yeah. And um, uh, but because it's true, because, you know, you said who cares if they sign? I mean, the reality is I'm not sure Dak's too worried, but CD cares. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, he, he's uh, been yeah. holding up. He cares. That's who cares if they sign. When you've had one or two contracts like Dak, you know, uh, even if it don't get done, he 140, 50 million <laughs> in the yeah. hole in the bank. CD, you yeah. know, I'm not saying he ain't saved his dollars or don't have his dollars that he's made over the years, but man, he, he finna go from 10, 11 mil, 5 mil a year to a possibly 26, 27 mil a year. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. a big signing bonus of probably 60 mil. Yes, sir. Yeah. That sets you up for life right there. It sure does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, to your point, though, a lot of times in sports, once the uh, even once the training camp begins, guys don't want to deal with it anymore. Certainly once the regular season begins, they don't want to deal with it anymore. They'll be like, let's just do it after the season now. But I do remember, to your point, I can't remember if we were in uh, – in Japan or maybe Mexico City, somewhere. I'm right. pretty sure we were in a foreign country when the Cowboys announced that Pup had signed yeah. uh, his latest new deal. Do you right. remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And and, and it, it, like I say, we, you know, we, we was in a foreign land, but it wasn't only that we was getting off the plane and you know, and 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 the thing was big because the Cowboys were coming. Now they gave it; they just added some nitroglycerin to that dynamite, yeah. man, and yeah. took it over the top. Yeah. So that's what Mr. Jones them do. You know, I'm not saying it's calculated, but it always seemed to hit at the right time. So, uh, 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 CD, you know, uh, Dak, I'm a little hesitant. That's a lot, a lot oh. of money for yeah. a guy that needs uh, a whole lot of people around him uh, uh, to, to, to help him, you know? So, and I'm not saying every quarterback don't need weapons, you know, but you know, uh, he's not Mahomes. He's not Aaron right. Rodgers. I don't care. And uh, you know, yeah. and I ain't got to walk around. So I love Dak. I love Dak. I'm a Cowboy fan. So I'm down with Dak, but um, we just need to know that with all this money, man, if we do have some big gaping holes, he got to cover them up and cover them up, not even thinking twice about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great point. And it's also a huge percentage yes. of the money, right, that that they're allowed to spend. If you if you give Dak this new contract, man, that's a big percentage of how much money you have available. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, 
you can be all in, but who? Yeah. All in on one guy? Nah. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, then when training camp does get going this time around, uh, you know, I assume the players like like everybody around here in the in the media world, for sure, thinks literally I've seen it written. I've heard it talked about. This is one of the worst off seasons in cowboy history. Right. Why is that? They said they were all in, but they didn't do enough. Well, what did they Any need player, to do? Tell me, Rad, what, what did they need to do, Rad? Well, they needed, to, they needed, uh, I mean, they, I, every team needs, but I, again, I get it. They could spend more in free agency, right? Mm-hmm. They need a running back, and there were a couple available, right? So they could have gone and gotten, and I love Zeke. He's one of the great guys. He's wonderful for that room. Zeke's not, you know, Derrick Henry yeah, or yeah, someone yeah. like this right now. That's right. You, that's you right. see what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. So, there, that's one thing they could have done. Running right? back, okay. They, that's the only thing. thing they they did was basically shore up the defense with you know a bunch of young dudes. Although they did get the one linebacker, you know. Oh, okay. So uh, they could have definitely done some work there in free agency, right? Mm, Those right. are the things they could have done. And and truly, if the you know if if all in meant what everybody took it to mean, um. That's what they would have done, right? All right. in generally means when you we're only a player or two away from taking this thing all the way. Let's go all in. Let's go, you know, in the back in the day in the Dallas Stars case, they signed Brett Hall to yes. go all in, right? right. You know, uh, back in the day in the Texas Rangers, they got Cliff Lee to go all in. That's right. And, and this year, year, you know, we're going to get to the Mavs, you know, putting Luca and Kyrie together, which actually happened last year. That's right. all in. You need right. that one guy. And, and so, it seems so to me John- like. Who would be yes, that sir. one guy to make John Raddick and feel that they're all in? Who would be that one guy? Well, that's the <clears> thing. <throat> they didn't need just one, but they didn't sign any. Uh, okay. Right? Okay. They didn't need just one. Yes, they sir. needed a running back. And you said it, too. And, you know, they needed a big-time run-stopping uh, linebacker probably right. because you know but now with with uh, a new defensive system it might not be all on a uh, linebacker but when we talked at the end of last season we didn't know dq was leaving right, but at right. that point at that point his his d- defensive linemen were basically all pass rushers right they yes. weren't stopping to run so so you, you were saying we needed a linebacker well get me that stud linebacker right give right. me that stud running back and it feels to me like we're a heck of a lot closer to all in so Edric, uh, Eric Kendrick is not enough uh, to be. A I don't know. Linebacker. I don't think of him as. I don't think of him as elite, Nate. <laughs> okay. I don't okay. think of him as. Oh, elite. you're looking for elite talent. Yes, so I you, am. So free agency is what got you, got you. You know, got your your your, your hairs raised on your back. It was lack of free agency. That, that, yes, that I wanted more. Seem. Okay, you wanted more. I wanted more, and I don't want to have to count on four rookies. We're che- we got two uh, offensive linemen who are switching positions. Could have signed there too. We needed offensive line. I hear you. I, I, I just want to know because you are our conduit through the media for the fans, yeah. and I, I, I like yeah. that. So I, I said, let me just see what's all in for John Radican and his followers and, and his um. You know his disciples out there that he's preaching yeah. and teaching to, but me. This is what they want. This is why it didn't bother me that they were silent. I look at it like this: when they went out and get drafted a guy in the second round, Keenan, the defensive uh, end, run stopper slash pass rusher. Uh, they have uh, a few young guys that they, you know, they're gonna look at it. Linebacker, they got uh, Kendricks came in. I just want to see where this thing go at because I think what we need is a plethora of quality guys, uh, B B players, and there's some veterans out there at running back that once once people get released, sweet thing about running back, it ain't like you got to be the smartest guy in the room. I'm not saying running backs are dumb. But you don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. We need maybe a home run hitter type guy. Uh, so 
uh, you know, we can throw to the out of the backfield. Uh, we can make him give it to him and let him get off tackle and go six to seven yards. That's what we need is a home run type guy. Uh, we got Rico Dottle. We got Zeke. Those guys are banging inside the tackles and can and has still have a little ability to get outside the tackles. They can block on third downs, and so I, I'm not worried. I'm I'm not worried. My thing is how quickly can you get the two draft picks acclimated to this league? Uh, are you going to throw them in during training camp and let them start during training camp and never take them out uh, and let them go through every uh, quarter of our preseason? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I have a different mindset. Uh, I think the Cowboys, and you heard me say this before, I think they're on a soft bill. Uh, I think Mike McCarthy is the coach of now and the future because you don't want to bring in these young guys, start to build, and even if the season is shaky and we don't have a lot of success, you're starting to build something and then get a new face as a, as a, as a, as a, as a coach. I, I'm good. Sign CD. We got a nice tight end, you know, and then we got to get see if Schoolmaker can stay healthy. And we'll, we'll be okay. Offensively, I think we'll be okay. We get another year out of Zach Martin. Now, that's the scary thing, and that's why I try to tell everybody we needed to draft yeah. an offensive lineman or get a free agent offensive lineman last year. So we're a year behind on that because uh, if we got offensive line, then we can dictate some things. And as quick, as quick as we can get these guys acclimated and up and running and at the speed of this game, the better off the Dallas Cowboys would be towards the end of the season. Uh, now, we they have a death row uh, first four or five games, but if they can get through that healthy and roll, the Cowboys gonna be all right. We getting out, we getting our corners back. We got all our safeties in play. Uh, all we need is for our defensive line to hold up. Now that's the scary part. Yeah, I think the defensive line that is the scary part. Uh, so you just got to do this a little bit, Nate, because you got a whole bunch of that blue Kool Aid dripping down uh, on your beard. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a blue yeah, Kool Aid yeah. you've been yeah, drinking. Yeah, because yeah, die hard, here's the baby, thing: die hard. you just said it. Yeah. You said it in your own comments there. You said, "Yeah, we need that home run hitter." And Rico Dottle and Zeke, they're not it, right? Mm -mm. So where's the home run hitter? I did not say they're not it. I said, you basically said we need, they can block, I said they you can, can run go between the tackles, and, get, and maybe get outside. I said you can go out and get a home run hitter. It would they, they the, should. The, the league will be that 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 last cut. The league will be dripping with speedsters. You cannot keep them all, and the way they are devaluing running backs, we will be able if we need to get one. You know. Who was the speedster for Mike McCarthy? Was it Darcy Levins? I don't think so. They had a kid out of Bama. I don't think so. They, did, they yeah. didn't have any home run hitters, but they had dependable, reliable running backs that could get you six, seven, eight yards, that could pick up the blitz. Boom. And they and they won. They won year yeah. in and year out. And but they, they did and have Aaron they, Rodgers. Yeah. But yeah, and, that, and, and you notice I never said that. I never yeah, brought I get up the quarterback. I get yeah, I never brought the quarterback because uh, it's, on, it's a few people. Excuse me, people. It's a few people that's elite, elite, and then you got yeah. guys that are just. Uh, I think great. I think Dak, Dak is a great quarterback. Yeah. Elite? No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get that. All right, so um, gosh, I guess we uh, we agree to disagree on the off season. It'll be fun to see what happens. We're about a month away from training camp. Yeah, unplug uh, yourself, man. You're a cunt doing it. Unplug yourself, bro. You're plugged into the people too good. You plugged into the uh, people. I guess I am. I, I guess I am. I need to. I need to switch. I can switch my plug over to the your side of things yeah, here. Yeah. And we'll see what I happens. Sound more but, like uh, I'm a part of the. Uh, the organization. Family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which I know. And, it, you know, and that's one of the it really is. It's one of the things I admire the most. I just told my son this this week. I said, you can't find a former Cowboys player that doesn't, I'm going to say beyond like, love right. Jerry Jones. Yeah. 
he 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 is such a good person to his players uh and you know his the people that yeah. you know again people that make him a ton of money and 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 give him all the success that they've had which is still plenty right player ex players all love him yeah right? he good man he good man he solid man uh yeah, i just uh, <clears throat> hey you know hey you know it is what it is but we're not here to discuss the joneses but we are here to talk about winning Winning, oh, winning, ah, uh, playoffs, Mavericks, playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> don't talk about the playoffs. Actually, you know it's interesting because we do we do want to get into the Mavs because you are a lifelong Celtics fan. Yes, which is okay because I agree you should stay true to your teams, even though I don't. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think it's noble. I like it, uh, and I kind of do. I'm always I'm always true to my Detroit teams, but I'll look over here and say, "Oh, squirrel!" You know, "Oh, yeah. shiny penny!" You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but wow. anyway, um, so and the Mavs are, are a very uh, intriguing team that had a unbelievable run through the West. Right? Uh-huh. They beat the number one seed. Uh, they beat the team, in, uh, you know, and easily that beat the defending champions. You know, yes. they beat their nemesis, the L.A. Clippers. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least their playoff nemesis for the last few years. So, uh, man, it's been surprising in a way to see Boston do. And is this what it is in your estimation, Nate? Are we seeing Boston do what Boston does? defensively in particular, the Mavs haven't scored 100 in any of the first three games. What did I tell you a week and a half ago? I said, if if we are to have a chance, I'm talking about the Celtics, to win this game, what they have to do is defense. Defense. Go back and pull up the tape. All I talked about was if they're going to have a chance, they're going to have to play defense. And they have done it in a most unique way, and that is by – Letting Brown, uh, uh, I can't think of the other kid with the dreads, uh, Drew Holiday, mm-hmm. stick this guy one on one, and may okay, Luca, you gonna get thirty, yeah. Okay, Kyrie, you gonna get fifteen to twenty, but what what about Green? What about these other guys? We they ain't gonna get five or six. We ain't gonna give them more about five or six points, and we are gonna beat you because your combined sixty three points. That means somebody got to come up with 35 somewhere else. Yeah. And uh, that ain't happening because I, yeah. we got white. We got too many guys that can, can can defend. And what was amazing last night is we didn't have a big fella. The big fella was right. out. Yeah. The big fella for yeah. singles was out. So, yeah. And when the Mavs jumped out to a 13-point lead early, I was thinking, and and Lively was pretty active at mm-hmm, that point. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh wow, man, Porzingis really does mean that much to them. Yes, but yes. then that sort of and and look, anytime you have Porzingis on your team, you know you're going to miss him a lot because of injury. Yes. Um, but but the reality is, you know what they're great at the, the Celtics right now. They're sort of the masters of positionless basketball. Yes. Right. They put about five, six, eight guys out there. You don't know who's who or what's what, and they're all, you know, really good at both ends of the floor. Yes. Uh, if you go to their percentage rates, Luca's at 35%. Uh, uh, the other kid is at 22%. But if you go over to Boston, you got 22, 21, 19, 16, all in there together. So you don't know, you got to pick your poison. All of them can shoot the three. All of them can drive to the basket. And all of them will play above average defense. So no matter who they're sticking, you you going to have a contested shot. In the league in the league today, you can't stop Luka. But you can make every shot a difficult shot. Even just an easy step back. If you're up on him with your hands up, it, he still has to shoot over you. And that, that's the deal now. Just get in front of a guy. Don't foul him. Make him shoot over you. Make him grow th- go through you to get to where he need to get. So, And as you notice, unlike the Timberwolves, they ain't letting Luka get to the top of the key before they, they challenge him. They let him step one foot across the uh, half-court line, and they out on him. So that means you got to yep. set that pick even further out. 
So when that guy turns and when he set that pick to go for the alley hoop, he got a long ways to go. Whereas when they was doing it before, they was right at the top of the key and Luka just lob it up and them guys was going up and get it. Well, now you got to take four or five steps and that gives the guy on the back end of the court that's out on a corner three to have a chance at least run in there and contest you for that shot. Now, uh, they started out slow last night because no Porzingis to protect the rim. So when they was mm-hmm. doing that, they, their <laughs> anticipation was a little slow at the beginning. But as the game got heated, they got better and better at it. Mm-hmm. Now, and then, of course, they take a big 21-point lead. They led, the Celtics did, by 21 points with like 11 left. It's a fourth quarter. Yes. They're up by 21. And I, you know, I, I'm sure all Mavericks fans are thinking, well, that's it. This is over. This series is over. And I'll be danged if the Mavs didn't make just an unbelievable comeback. They go on a 20-2 to two run, Nate, and get back to within three points. Oh, yes. And uh, I'm sitting there just looking. Uh, and I'm like, Wow. I, I knew that something uh, defensively, uh, offensively had to happen uh, to, 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 to break this run, a timeout, or something. And so uh, when that charge popped up or uh, the blocking popped up, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a difference maker in this game. This is going to sway this thing one way or another because one team stands to lose their superstar. The other team stands to get free throw. So we, we see how that went and it went against the Mavericks. Uh, and that leads to the point where me and you need to be right now. Yeah. That call. And again, yes. I wanted the Mavs to win. Yes, he did. But I believe Luca fouled him there and Mavs are Mavs fans are going, uh, they're already up in arms outraged, but I promise you if it had been the other way, right. And, and Tatum was trying to set a pick on Luca and the same thing happened Every Mavs fan would say it was a foul. It was a foul. And fans, look, I think it's somewhat generational. Man, fans just have to have somebody to blame. Nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to just say, hey, man, we didn't get it done. Everybody wants to blame someone else. Heck, maybe they're following Luca, who he argues for his other his teammates, you know. His teammates get a foul, and he's arguing with the ref about it. I mean, I don't know what it is, but this everybody seems to think it's on the refs. I hate blaming the refs, Nate, and I know you do too. My, my thing is I've been fortunate, and we talked off air. I've been fortunate since high school to always have had a coach that believed that, you know, ref is not going to dictate who we are. We're going to work hard enough. We're going to be smart enough in certain situations not to let this happen. First of all, you know, somebody said about uh, two weeks ago that this good, this dude, Luca, is better than Larry Bird. And I just kind of laughed, right? You think Larry Bird would have tried to take a charge right there? Think about that now. You're the best yeah. player on the court. You're just like Larry Bird. You're not a great one-on-one defender. You are a great help defender. Somewhere in there, somewhere in your mind, you got to be saying, if I go out this game, we stand a great chance of losing. He did not think of that. He did not think of that. And now you are forcing the ref to make a 50-50 call. That was a 50-50 call. You lost. Not only did you lose the call, but you got out of the game with this sixth foul, and you gave the Celtics the uh, momentum back. So Mm -hmm. not only did – that's one, you're out of the game. Two, on a 50-50 call. And three, you gave the momentum back to the Seas. That was was a killer. That was a killer. Larry Bird would not have put himself in that situation. Sometimes you have to depend on the secondary player to try to divert that guy. Because you're in the game. You're making a run. You know, the momentum was not that great that your slow feet was going to make the difference. No. And it's not like uh, Luca would or should go into it thinking, you know, I'm a superstar, which he is. But I'll get this call. Because it isn't like Luca. Luca superstars do sometimes. Yes. But Luca maybe never will because he complains so much. You, you know, 
one thing about me, and I told you this a couple of weeks ago, and I try to be consistent. If that's who you are, be who you are. And but understand the people you're going at with the venom that you're going at. These are not uh, robots. These are humans. Yeah. That you going at that you cussing out in different languages. They know you're cussing them out. So, don't, you know, don't think that you're that smart to tell them, you know, and they supposed to have thick skin and the majority of them do. And the majority of them walk into the thing saying, telling their partner, you know, we got Luca tonight. You know, we got Luca tonight. And so I have no problems with this is one thing about superstars that I've adjusted to due to the fact that I had Troy, Mike, yeah. Emmett, yeah. Dion, yeah. Charles Haley. The list goes on, on and on. I played with superstars. Larry Allen, I played with and against superstars. And the one thing I had to accept as being a other, as Shaq would put me as a other, is I had to accept their quirkiness. I have no problem. I, now, when Luca plays, I expect for him to cry from the beginning to the end, to the point where it don't even bother me. Okay. You know, that is who Luca is. People say he's going to grow out of it. Why, why should he? He's very successful in being who he is. I mean, this kid, this kid killing folks, man. I mean, not oh, yeah. literally putting them in the ground, but yeah. I mean, why, I mean, tell me why should he change? Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, he, it, he, he can get it. He can he get did. his Don't, even when he's yes. whining, crying, and uh, and they're you know defending him. Yes. He can get his, and so he's amazing. But what I want to say is, I can't live my life. When I first got here to the to the to the to the Metroplex, I I, I had to live with the, the Miami Heat. You know, oh the Miami Heat did this, and the Miami, I'm like. Is this is what if this is this what it's about? Crying and whining. I got here, we was losing. You know, they killed Coach Landry. They they, they knew the refs by names. I mean, I'm like, is this is who we are? And then Jimmy came in. And Jimmy didn't believe in refs dictating yeah. games. And my high school coach didn't believe it. My college coach didn't believe it. It's just too many plays. Now, don't get me wrong. Certain times in the game, you'd be like, whoa. Yeah. You know, this thing, is, and I'm quite sure you got a couple of stories where things have just changed. Yes. Uh, the, yes. The, you know, you can see it, obviously, and you can't shake it. You know, and I go to the New Orleans game several years ago in the playoffs. You could not yeah. shake that. You could not shake that. But a 50 50 call against Luca? Nah, 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 nah. Now nah, that that ain't the reason last night. That ain't the reason. Luca is smarter than that, and he should have yep. played smarter than that. He needs to be if he if he you know that's a, that's that basketball IQ you know game time situation yes. right. His, he let his emotions uh, uh, get away score from situation, him. I yeah, should say. he let yeah, his emotions yeah, get yeah. away from him. Yeah. So and you're right about Jimmy. For uh, you know, I remember and probably in almost every media scrum after a game, you know. There's a media person, right. maybe in some cases just a young person who doesn't really know what they're supposed to ask. So, you know, they go to the default. Uh, did you think that was a bad call? And in almost every press conference after the game, Jimmy would say, oh, we got to be better than a bad call or two. We, we've got to be better than that. We can't let the calls affect us. We can't let the referees affect us, you know. And that was it, man. That was his attitude. I loved it. I, I love not making that excuse, if you will. But then I also do remember, to your point, about it does happen. Yeah, it happens. One out of, one yeah, out of I what, remember, 30 to your calls point, or 40 calls. Yeah. And we were in, uh, but here's one from uh, from Jimmy, actually, where yeah. we were in New York. We were playing the Giants, and it's really cold that day. I remember that. And uh, we get in that post-game press conference, and Jimmy grabs a football, which he never has a football during the right. post-game press conference. He gets up there, and he goes, this is a football. <laughs> And ever since my daddy showed me one of these and said, this is a football, I have never, ever, ever seen such bad officiating. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, coach, <laughs> you got to be kidding me, man. And Jimmy was, you know, he could be so dramatic. Yeah. And uh, 
And uh, anyway, so that was uh, so it does happen. And I told you yeah. about my son. They were defending state champions. They go play some school over here, and they, you know they brought in their own refs. Or I don't know what happened. I looked at our our scores stat sheet at halftime. The fouls were twenty nine to one. Yes, and half, three three of the starters on my son's team had fouled out. Wow. I'm like, yeah, see that now it happens, right? We know yes. there was some payoffs, right? There was some betting and point shaving and all that in the <laughs> NBA, right? It happens. Right. But in general, don't blame the refs. I just believe this. <clears throat> you have to know who you are and yeah. how important you are to a team. Yeah. And when Luca got that fifth foul, somebody should have said, Luca, no, at all costs. We're making this run. We cannot have you because somebody did a stat, and I think I was listening to Chuck as I was riding around early. Yeah, where they are minus seventeen when he's not in the game. Yeah, that yeah. mean you. That mean you go from positive to 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 negative so quick. It, it don't. I mean, he go to bench yeah. for one minute and five points are scored. So yep. if you have a five point or six point lead the, the, within thirty seconds and them hitting the bench, it, the game is back yeah. even. Yeah. So <clears throat> when Luca went to that bench, I was talking to a guy uh, in Georgia who said he's a Celtic fan, but he don't talk like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Man, what do you think?" I said, "Game over. Game over." I said, "Luca, Luca on the bench. That goes to zero. That mean." Uh, Kyrie, and, and, and this is what I tell people. This is what I tell people. This is what I tell people. Let me tell we you something. We might need something. to name, change the name of the show. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Let me, this is what I tell people. I tell people, Kyrie is a star, not oh, a yes. superstar. Yeah. See, yeah. Kyrie could have went to the bench, and if Luca was left out there, I'd have been nervous. Yeah. I'd have yeah, been nervous. Yeah. yeah. But Kyrie left out there by himself? Nah. Nah. Yeah. And see, that's what I that's what LeBron knew. That's what the uh New York Net, Nets, is I got it right, the New the, the Brooklyn Nets. That Brooklyn, was, that's yeah, Brooklyn. what they knew. See, some guys are not Celtics they, knew it. Yeah. They are not superstars. They are stars. Yeah. You know, you can't, you, you, you can have your nights when you dictate, but it's hard for you to do it on a consistent basis. And yeah. uh, the, the Boston one having it, they're like, okay, Luca gone? Nah, let's just play great defense. G- don't give up a three with, with th- uh, two minutes left. Let's don't give up threes. Let's give up twos. They can't stop us from going in the middle. We may can't stop them from going in the middle. But they definitely can't stop us. And we got more shooters, natural shooters, than they do. That's how yep. the game was won, man. Yeah. Defense. Defense yeah. is winning this game. And I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, I don't care about the shooting. The shooting comes and goes. But like the great John Wooden say, foot defense is all about a guy's want to. Got him, he ain't got quick feet. Or he ain't got yep. this. No, it's, defense is about what do you want to do. Yeah. You know, and so, and, and I think we saw a more defense, better defense, and more defense from Luca at the beginning of this game than we've seen all series. You know, he was he was getting staying in front of people. He yes. was you know flying and tipping balls and the whole thing. Yes, but as the game wore on, he Legs don't he tight. can't keep his foot speed mm-hmm. unless it's offensively yeah. because he has the ball and can dictate where he goes. He's not yeah. going to be rushed. Yeah. And before yeah. we get off this air, let me say this right here. You know, let me tell you people something. We have not forgotten about the great Jerry West. We have not no. forgotten about him. Mr. Clutch, the logo. May God be with you and you and your family. Uh, so I wanted to get that out, Rad. I don't know if you was thinking about it, but I say it's, it's crossing my mind. I better get it out. I'm a little old now. I don't want to forget yeah. uh, the great that's, Jerry West. That's a great way. And, and while we're at it, on the same day, a man who was actually 10 years older, who impacted so many lives, and I got to know quite well, Robert Hughes. Yes. I don't know if you ever met him, Nate. Nah. He was the head coach at Dunbar High School wow. in Fort Worth, and he died yesterday, too. Wow. And um, he, he's the all-time winningest high school basketball coach, 1,333 wins. And I'm telling you, that man 
in the in the heart of a, a tough neighborhood in Fort Worth. He changed I a lot of lives. I first got I used to hear about that, man. I used to yeah. hear about it when I first got to the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. he's a great man. Uh, we lost two great men of basketball yesterday, and uh, and so that's a great way to end it, Nate. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, and uh, may God uh, protect each of them and their families as as they now uh, move on. And um, and look, we'll do this again. We may have to, you know, I don't know if we'll take a break before training camp. I will say this: we probably have to do one to wrap up the uh, seven game yeah. historic comeback by the Dallas Mavericks yes, next week. Yes, come on back to come you on see back what I'm to saying? C-Town so we can <laughs> we can put a ribbon on this, so we can put a bow on this. Yeah, come you on know, back, baby. Come on back. You uh, see this right here? four you straight right wins. Here? Die hard, baby. That's, yeah. that's what you Mavericks better do is die hard, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it will be. It will be. Or maybe the Celtics hey, will be say, dying hard. Hey, we got we'll find out next week. We'll find out show Spencer Bass. Oh, my emotions are so up and down. Oh, my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a group saying that. Emotions got the best of your love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. It's been fun, Nate. We'll do it again. Yes, sir. We will do it again. And if we if we if we continue on, it'll just be mostly a lot of conversation, people. It's just conversation Love about it. camps and about life and yeah. our kids. And we'll let you a little bit in on us, man, and what we're doing. And bring in Spencer yeah. Bass, too, man. Yeah, and we'll get uh yeah. uh big jug of uh, a clear pitcher so you can see the blue Kool-Aid. Yes, man. I'm drinking it, baby. I die yeah. hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. We'll see you next week, All man. Right, see you next week, John. Bye. God okay. bless you and your family. You too.